We want to thank all of our patrons. Every little bit really helps, and we really appreciate your support. Yeah, y'all are great. Super sketchy. Okay, so this is ours. Hello, friends. We're back at the boat. We were here all day yesterday preparing everything for um, the big rewire today. Just getting stuff mounted on the bulkhead, get everything in place kind of where it needs to be. That way everything's set and we can just start clipping and uh, hooking up wire. So let's go ahead and look at all the different elements that are in place that we need to wire up. Okay, so stuff I hooked up yesterday. I got the fuse box installed which is gonna be for like VHF, the AIS, the uh, various things. Um, there's a cool one of these that's like half switched and half constant. This one is all constant, but I'm gonna, it's gonna be used as like a switched fuse box. So everything on my electronics breaker switch is going to go through here. And it's all stuff that's sensitive and I know needs like fuses. Um, the other thing I wired in place is our digital yacht I A I S wireless receiver. Um, this KJM like antenna splitter, which I've never used before. This is brand new, so we'll after we you know get it hooked up and see how it works. Um, I'll let you know what I think about it. But basically, it takes my I, my um, combo antenna on the stern, which is GPS and VHF. Um, I bought that for this unit. But I want to go ahead and use it for my VHF radio. And um, I can also use it for AM, FM, stereo, AS receiver, VHF radio. So it'll, it'll use that one antenna for all of these different things. So I um, got this little splitter. It was like $70, I think. Um, I got my main breaker. I got my main breaker here. And then I went ahead and moved <clears throat> the uh, battery charger inside. It was in the port lazarette and um it gets kind of wet in there so i just wanted to go ahead and move it inside so it's out of any weather and this is my little truck stop 400 watt inverter um eventually i'll have like a sign inverter but uh right now this does the trick for what i need okay so the first on the list we're gonna hook up the ac so this is coming straight from the shore power the new shore power plug out in the cockpit and it's gonna hook up to our AC shore power like breaker switch and then go from there to a new outlet that is here um, So that's the first task and uh, I'm terrified of AC. I've read over all the different stuff and um, You know should should go as planned, but um Alternating current is scary DC is no problem, but alternating current is uh, not fun so a couple of the books I've been using is this Boat Owner's Illustrated Electrical Handbook. Really great book. Has a ton of easy information, good information. Another one is um, this Nigel Calder. That guy's a genius. He's also like a hilarious interview. There's a great interview with him on, uh, on the Wind podcast. Um, this is a great book. You should have this on your boat. And then this other one, it's like mostly European systems. So I think it's like, what, 240 or 220 or whatever. But the um, it's still cool because it has tons of photos that helps you kind of get your head around stuff. So those are all good books to have. So let's get to um, hooking up this AC. And uh, once we, we're happy with that, that's all. In the clear then we'll start running all of the uh, DC systems okay so we're getting ready to put the connections on this AC cable it's gonna be the same process for all the DC stuff as well um, but I'll just show you step by step on this one and then on a lot of the hooking up the other stuff um, will be on fast forward so it doesn't take us you know 10 episodes to get through this process but um, with the uh, AC, the black is actually at hot, which is different than DC, which black is ground. Um, and then white is called neutral, and green is ground or grounding, which will go to your, on a boat, it'll go to your grounding system, 
which hooks to all your through holes and everything. And uh, basically these two both go to a ground, but this cable specifically is coming from the shore power um, plug or outlet rather, inlet, I'm not sure what it's called, um, outside and then it runs in and we're gonna be hooking it straight up to our switch. So we need to go ahead and put on some uh, connectors to do that, wire it up. Now on a boat, it's uh, <clears throat> always a good idea to not ever solder anything. So if something heats up, then the solder can drip and make other connections and start a fire. Now if you're on land and you have a fire from your electronics or you're in your car, it's a bummer, you hop out, you know, you try to put it out on a boat, any step you can take to make sure that there isn't a fire because that is, you know, if you're at sea and there's a fire, you're pretty much done. Um, or, or there's higher chance that, that you're going to sink than, you know, the risk is much greater than if you're on land. So you don't ever want to solder anything on a boat if you can get away with it. And generally you can. The main way to do that is you use connectors, crimp connectors like this that are uh, heat shrink and um, the way I do it is I have this gas powered little heat gun because when you have everything unhooked you're doing electrical you don't have any power for your regular heat gun so you want to have one of these in case your power goes out and you're trying to rewire and get it going this way you can you can seal up those uh, these connectors and you obviously don't want to use electrical tape or anything like that you want to have this thing to be completely sealed from any kind of moisture if a leak you know boats leak all the time they leak all over the place so so this is the, the correct way is to use these heat shrink crimps and uh, connection points so go ahead and get this uh, connection we want and uh, this is a cool ratcheting not a ratcheting uh, this is a cool wire stripper I'll show you in action in a bit this is our ratcheting crimper and then just a regular, you know, wire cutters. I'm leaving this green one longer because it's going to a, a, a higher point on this little spot on the switch I'll show you. So I want to wait and, and trim this one when um, I know exactly where it wants to be. So we'll go ahead and put our connector on there. These are a little shy here. I'm going to go ahead and use the regular kind of a crimper on this. Because there's not much to grab. Get that crimped down. I'm going to go ahead and heat shrink this. And this thing just kicks out a flame. There's different attachments you can get. So you can actually use this as a solder gun if you want. And you'll see it start to melt. It's hard to see on camera. It's probably impossible. But you'll see it change colors when that glue is activated and starts to melt to that wire. And you see it's starting to cinch up. You kind of want to move it around a little bit so you don't burn the wire, but and get it down at the base real good. And there we have it. That's on there secure now. <clears throat> All right, we'll go ahead and. Get our heat shrink on this one and then we'll get our switch panel up here and see where it falls and see where we want to cut that grounding one
Yeah, that one's nice. I like cutting it shorter like that. It worked out better because there's more of the cable in there. There's not any wire, you know, so it's like a better, better adhesion on there. All right, let's get our, um, pull one of these out to use for the next one. Let's get our switch panel up here and look at where we're, where we're going with this. The other thing to know is that, and remember, is that there's lots of vibrations on a boat. So you always want to use these ring connectors and not the kind that just like you can loosen the, the bolt a little bit and slide it in. Never use those because if that bolt wiggles loose and that connection comes out, you can have it short out and cause a fire or lose power or all kinds of things. So. Just keep in mind, it may not feel like there's a lot of vibration, but there is endless amount of vibration on a boat. So always use these ring connectors because there's it may get a, a flicker if it vibrates loose, but it's not going to hop out and touch anything else and create a short. So um, always use the ring connectors. All right, so that's our black to our hot and our white to our neutral. And here in our book, it's showing us approved shore power connections. And it's showing us that the white here is grounded. The black is ungrounded, which is hot. And then the green is the grounding. So. We're all set. So, now I think I did the right thing keeping this, this green one long because it seems like it's at the right spot. I'm going to go ahead and trim this up so there's no tension on it. I'll show you guys this cool wire stripper in case you never used it. I'd never used one until I had a boat. So it pinches and strips for you. So you don't, there's, there's no risk of you going into the wire like you know how it is when you're doing your car stereo or something, it's real easy to um, strip, trying to strip the end and you end up cutting a bunch of the wire and then your wire just gets shorter and shorter. So you put it in there, it grabs it, this is the cutting side, this is the grip side, and then it just pulls it apart like that. There you have it. It's gonna repeat our process. Putting it in there. All right, it's all on there. Now we gotta get that little bolt out. I think I'm gonna unscrew the switch from the panel because it'll be easier to get in there. Kind of get that pushed around so it's in line. Now we're going to go ahead and screw this back in. Then it's time to test it. Moment of truth. Okay, we got it screwed back in. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, I set up my switch panels with these detachable hinges, which are cool. That being said, I'm going to go ahead and leave kind of extra, a little bit of extra length so that I can actually unsnap them and lay them flat. So I want to have enough length when everything's installed and enough slack here that I can unhook it and lay it flat and do any work I need to do on it. Now I'm not going to go for a walk or anything, so I'm not going to leave an excessive amount, but I um, mean, it'll be all tidied up with like, uh, like cable ties and stuff, but um, we, I just want to keep in mind that I need enough length to be able to lay this flat, you know? Okay, there we go. So there's our panel up. We have our switch off. I'm going to go ahead and plug the shore power in and, 
and see how it goes. Super sketchy. Okay, so this is ours. All right, here goes, moment of truth. Let's see what happens. There we have it, power on. The, the reverse polarity light's not on, so everything should be good. There we go, I'm gonna turn it all back off so we can hook up the outlet and then we'll test a light or something on that and see, see the power in action. Okay, so went off camera for a bit so I could run the main ground from the, uh, it, it runs from the engine block to like the post where all the batteries hook up and then ran it into here, hooked up our ground strip here. So this goes to, eventually it ends up to the engine block, which is our main ground and everything needs to go to that. Um, this stuff takes a long time. Don't, don't rush any of this. My advice to you is like, from ex my own experience, don't think, oh, I'm gonna wire a couple things up before a day sale. Um, because you're either gonna do it like halfway, um, or you're end up you're gonna end up not getting to go sailing, and then you're gonna be bummed. Whoever's gonna come with you is gonna be bummed. So just take your time. Realize it's gonna take a long time. Unless you're some sort of wizard, um, it takes a long time. Like even crimping and heat shrinking and making sure the uh, wires are the correct length and then they're hooked up in the right spot. It takes me forever to do this stuff. So our main goal today is to get the bilge pump hooked back up and the battery charger, you know? It's like, I would love to have it all done today, but the reality is, is like, if I can get to that today, I'm stoked. So we got this hooked up. I went ahead and wired in a grounding off of our little um, post on our switch that uh, we saw earlier. And uh, this is gonna go here to our main grounding switch. So this is gonna be, all of our AC grounding will be taken care of if we go to this. And uh, the only other AC thing we're hooking up, well, I guess there's two things. We're hooking the battery charger up to the shore power and we're hooking up our um, outlet so that we'll have, you know, full voltage without the inverter when we're shore side. When we're hooked up to shore power, we can run power tools and whatever else we need to run. So, so this is our grounding. And again, all these wires are going to get taken care of when we uh, get to a happy place. I got this ground is running. This is going to hook up here and it's running to our plug that we're hooking up. Now, I'm reusing this wire because I know there's no corrosion, it's perfectly good. It's not color-coded the correct way. We, you, we don't have our white, you know? So in DC, the yellow is our ground for safety, um, and then the red is the hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up so that the red is hot, which would be black if it was colored correctly, and then the yellow is gonna be ground or white neutral. And then we're gonna have our green one I just showed you is gonna to go to this green spot here, and that's the grounding. And it all says on the back of this fixture. Um, if this had been a cable that was black and red, I wouldn't have used it, just because it's so dangerous with the black being hot in AC and then you mix it up with the ground, it's too risky. But I know that there's no black on here, so I can go ahead and know that this is our hot um, and this is our neutral. Um, but not my preference, but uh, this is what I got. I, I think it's a waste to throw out this cable. It's perfectly good. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and use it. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get some fixtures hooked up to these and uh, get this plug wired in. And um, we're gonna test the AC again and see if a light comes on plugged into that plug. And then we can move on to our DC. This is our wire from our outlet, which I'll show you in a second. And as I said, recognizing that the red in this arrangement is gonna be our hot 
and the yellow is going to be our neutral. So neutral is white on AC. We're going to go ahead and hook that side up here. And make sure that I have my shore power plug completely out. And, uh, and it's also switched off on the dock. So there's like a double double safety in case somebody like, uh oh, it's unplugged and they plugged it in, you weren't looking. Take as many precautions as possible so you don't get electrocuted. So we got that. Now we're gonna use our hot, which should be black, but like I said, we're reusing this wire because it's perfectly good and nobody should be monkeying with my boat anyway, so. We got our hot, hot, and it says it on a label here. Neutral, which is white, neutral. We've got our grounding coming here to our main grounding that goes to the battery, and then this grounding goes to our plug. So all of our groundings hooked up, our neutral, everything's hooked up. Let's go ahead and click this panel back in. Okay, our switch is off. Here's our plug. I think I want to show you guys real quick. So, I installed this plug in what I would call upside down to every plug I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, there's been a lot of talk about this is actually the safest way to install plugs because if there's a short here, the hots with gravity fall away from the ground which makes sense. Um, so I figured it doesn't hurt to be extra safe. Visually, I hate it, makes me insane. But I can't really see it, so it doesn't matter. And I'd rather be safe and ugly than, uh, than more dangerous. So I'm gonna go up now, plug everything in, come back down and we'll switch it on and we'll have a light plugged in and we'll see if it works. All right, so I got us a drop light here. Hopefully this bulb ain't blown. I won't really know until I hook it up. But let's clip this on here. I don't want to be touching this if I can get away with it. Now we're plugged in out there. Power's sent to the uh, shore power. Let's flip this on. Okay, it's got. It says we got power here. Now let's push this. There we go. So it's all. Now we got power. That's great. Now all we gotta do is drop this and wire up the um, battery charger and then we can move on to this other panel getting the uh, bilge pump hooked up. That's my main goal for today. Um, and then we can go from there. So, so far we're doing good on the AC side of things. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time.